Lost media is found almost every day, and throughout 2023, so many new pieces of lost media have been found. This includes lost TV pilots, lost movie screenplays, and even a lost episode that was never aired because it led to someone's death. So in today's video, we will be talking about lost media found in 2023. Welcome back to another video, and since we're officially in the halfway point of the year, I decided to make a part 2 to lost media being found in 2023. After all, we're in the halfway point. Keep in mind that I will not be talking about every single piece of lost media being found in 2023 just because there's way too many to talk about in one video, so I decided to pick out the more interesting ones for this video. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram and Twitter and go buy yourself something nice at EarlDoesn'tExist.com using my link in the description below. Bluey Pilot Most TV show pilots are never shown or released to the public and are only shown in the studio where they pitch the show. Bluey is an Australian animated series about a six-year-old blue healer dog named Bluey and her family, younger sister Bingo, mother Chili, and father Bandit. Before the show premiered in 2018, two pilots were made for the show, a one-minute test in 2016 and a six-minute pilot in 2017. Twitter user that one pickle found both of the Bluey pilots. They shared the 2016 pilot on February 4th, 2023, and the 2017 pilot on February 9th, 2023. The 2016 pilot was only one minute long and centered around Bluey being pushed on a swing and getting faster and faster until the climax when she goes all the way around on the swing and crashes into her father, who wasn't paying attention at all and was focused on his phone. The shorts was made in the creator's spare time and was never shown outside the network studio. The reason according to the show's creator, Joe Brum, is that quote, it was just unsafe. You could never put that on kids TV. In 2017, the second pilot was shown in the Asian Animation Summit and picked up by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation and the British Broadcasting Corporation. Once they picked up the pilot, it was later made into an episode titled The Weekend with some slight changes of course. Like I said, this was found by that one pickle on Twitter and he got these two pilots from an anonymous source. George Lopez Door the Explorer commercial. In 2018 throughout 2023, people have been searching for a lost commercial where it features George Lopez and Dora the Explorer. People remember that George was in the world of Dora, asking her how to get back to Nick at night. He would also ask Dora where he's at, where she would reply saying that he's a Nick Jr. This commercial was later found by Marbs and posted the commercial to YouTube on March 20th, 2023. This commercial was made to promote reruns of the George Lopez show. yourself where am i on oh, nick jr nick jr i'm supposed to be on nick at night wow he's really far from home can you tell me how to get to nick at night who do we ask for help when we don't know which way to go oh that's easy that would be my agent or uh gps george lopez every night on nick at night Man, on us. okay i'm coming and they say i got a big head the way that Marbs found this commercial is quite fascinating because they found it by watching old VHS recordings of the Backyardigans and the George Lopez Dora commercial randomly popped up, making this lost media found media. Star and the Forces of Evil found unaired pitch pilot. Star vs. the Forces of Evil is about a magical princess named Star Butterfly who receives a royal magical wand for her 14th birthday. She proves to her parents that she is not ready for the responsibility that comes with it. As a result, they send her to a place that doesn't have magic, which is planet Earth. The show is called Star vs. the Forces of Evil, but the pilot of the show was different. It was instead called Star and the Forces of Evil. The pilot of the episode was found on June 2nd, 2023. The Lost Media Wiki user that found this piece of Lost Media uploaded the full 13-minute pitch pilot to the file sharing site Catbox. Subsequent re-uploads of the pitch pilot will later be shared on social media and various video sharing and file sharing sites. It is currently unknown how this user managed to obtain a copy of the pitch pilot and if any uploads of the pitch pilot were uploaded before the user's upload on Catbox. The pilot episode closely resembles the official first episode that was broadcast on television, but it incorporates certain elements from the third episode as well. 
There were also some other small changes such as Star's parents looking a bit different and that Marco Diaz was instead named Sol Diaz. Some other minor changes were that some character skin color were different. Sol Diaz had a black belt instead of the other lower ranked belts that we see in the official show. And in the pilot we see Sol not warm up to Star by the end of the pilot. While in the official episode 1, we see Marco warm up to Star by the end of the episode. Some minor changes of course, but the pilot was basically episode 1 that aired on TV so not really that different. Gremlins R-Rated Screenplay Gremlins is a 1984 horror comedy film directed by Joe Dante. It follows the story of Billy who receives a cute critter called Gizmo as a Christmas gift. However, after breaking the rules of caring for Gizmo, a horde of mischievous gremlins is unleashed upon the town of Kingston Falls. Chris Columbus wrote the initial screenplay for Gremlins during a time when he was living in a New York City apartment loft with an infestation of mice, which would scurry by his fingers if his hands was hanging over the bed. Columbus also had a fascination with universal horror films at the time, and while watching a horror film with one of his friends one evening, his friend said, You love monster movies so much. Why don't you write a monster movie? Columbus ran with this idea and combined it with how creeped out the mouse infestation made him feel to come up with the idea that would become Gremlins. Columbus initially wrote Gremlins as a straightforward horror picture featuring a scene in which Billy's mom's head comes rolling down the stairs and a scene where Billy and his girlfriend Kate enter a McDonald's to find the food untouched but the customers fully devoured. This version of the screenplay eventually made its way into the hands of Steven Spielberg who was enthusiastic about the idea, calling it one of the most original things I've come across in many years. However, he had apprehensions about the script's dark and violent nature, encouraging Columbus to rewrite what was done to make the film suitable for a more general audience. Columbus took this advice on board with him and Spielberg collaborating on several more drafts of the screenplay, eventually resulting in the film we know today. It's pretty wild how this PG movie was meant to be rated R in the beginning. The rated R versions of the Gremlin screenplay was not publicly available, with the only description of its contents coming from a 2020 Collider interview with Columbus in which it was discussed. The rated R screenplay was found on May 17th, 2023. Spider-Man Safety Series Spider-Man Safety Series is a line of direct-to-video animated educational tapes by Corona MTI Film and Video that were distributed by The Learning Company. Released in 1990, four separate video tapes were produced. Don't Hide Abuse, Smart Kids Play It Safe, What To Do About Drugs, and Where Do You Go For Help. These shorts were created to be ran in an elementary school classroom setting and each copy came with a lesson plan for teachers to instruct their students with after watching. The VHS release has long gone out of print, and due to it being sold exclusively to schools, copies are difficult to obtain. Only one of the four shorts were preserved titled Don't Hide the Abuse, while the other three videos became lost media. However, the third video titled What to Do About Drugs was found on June 5th, 2023, making only half of the series lost media. An official re-release is unlikely as it would have to be cleared by Disney and Sony. Lost Media Wiki user Rogue Knight contacted the publisher of these videos and got this message in return. We received your letter and did some research. It looks like Phoenix distributed these for a while and then withdrew them. They were produced by LCA as the Spider-Man Safety Series and most LCA titles, including these, were acquired by Fox which then licensed them back to Phoenix. The Fox contract shows that Fox's rights were due to expire in 2005, but since we never heard whether Fox renewed those rights, we don't know the current status. The contract also shows that all distribution is subject to underlying rights belonging to Marvel. Your letter stated that there were three episodes, which in fact, there were four. You overlooked where do you go for help. We have 6,000 plus VHS tapes, not all of which are fully documented. That is a project I am working on presently. If I come across these, I will let you know. However, I suggest you try Fox first. The first video in the series, Don't Have the Abuse, shows Spider-Man addressing the issue of physical abuse. Maria, a young elementary school student, is afraid to tell anyone that her father physically abuses her. Her friends become suspicious of her bruises and they ask Spider-Man to help out. 
Spider-Man is able to give the children advice and eventually Maria tells her secret to a trusted adult. In the second video titled, Smart Kids Play It Safe, Spider-Man invites viewers to follow his friends, EJ, Timmy, Maria, and Jason on their way home from elementary school and discover how they handle the secret safety tests he has arranged. Spider-Man's friends prove they are responsible for following the seven safety rules he has taught them. Spider-Man, Smart Kids Play It Safe is a children's safety guide about walking home from school and being home alone. The program is fully animated with multi-cultural cast of characters. However, this short is lost media. The third video of the series titled, What To Do About Drugs shows Timmy, an elementary school student, being offered drugs by two very persuasive older boys. His friends enlist the help of Spider-Man to teach him about drugs and making good decisions. This short was found on June 5th, 2023, making this series partially found, since half of it is still lost media. Little information is known about the fourth last video of the series, which is titled, Where Do You Go For Help? There is a listing that hints that it's in the possession of the New York State Library on their site. So maybe the last part of the series will be found very soon. Chucky Wanna Play Chucky Wanna Play is a cancelled PC and console video game by Tick Games that was supposed to be released back in 2011. In the game you play as Chucky killing people, the video game was funded by Kickstarter but it failed to reach its goal of $1 million so it was never released, making it lost media. But on February 18, 2023, a prototype of the video game was uploaded to the Internet Archive by user Riley5411. The description of the post claims that the build was found on an Xbox 360 dev kit. Family Game Night Family Game Night was a game show that had games based on existing board games from Hasbro. The show would supersize them to real life and turn them into interactive games for the contestants. Examples include such games as Connect 4 Basketball, where the Connect 4 board game was turned into a basketball competition or Sorry Sliders, where the game Sorry was turned into a curling competition. The families that won the minigames would collect Monopoly Crazy Cash cards based on the Monopoly Crazy Cash game, and would collect cash prizes at the end of the episode. The show was aired on The Hub, and each episode would be an hour long. In 2016, the search began, trying to find the full episodes, as some episodes weren't lost media. Throughout 2023, many of the show's episodes were found, but on April 17th, 2023, the last missing episode was found, making the whole series found. I do remember growing up with this show, and it's crazy to me how it took four years to find every single episode of Family Game Night. Class of 96 Class of 96 is a short-lived teen drama series that aired on Fox from January to May 1993. It followed the lives of seven students during their first year of an Ivy League university. Class of 96 never received any home media release following its cancellation. Though many know that they doubt a home release would be successful due to the show's mixed critical opinions. Because of the lack of a home media release, all uploaded episodes come from VHS tape recordings from fans. The show has a total of 17 episodes, which all of them were lost, but throughout the year 2023, a handful of episodes have been found. And on May 16, 2023, the last four episodes of this series have been found, making this piece of lost media found. Betty Boop Movie 1993 In 1993, production for a Betty Boop movie was in the works, but was later cancelled. In the movie, Betty Boop grows up and can first be seen performing on stage with her father as a baby, then as a 9-year-old, and then as an adult. Where she can be seen singing, I Wanna Be Loved By You. Betty was to have been a waitress at the Greasy Spoon, who was desperate to meet her long-lost father Benny, who was a vaudevillian. A couple of guys help Betty find her father, and she gets married to her love interest, Johnny, and becomes Betty Davenport. According to storyboard artist Stephen Wall, 90% of the film was storyboarded before the project was cancelled, and Wallace and Wells had completed several songs for the film. 20 years after the film was cancelled, a storyboard reel of the song, Where Are You, was uploaded to YouTube by user agent 00OP. The reel features Jimmy Rolls and Sue Rainey as the voice of Benny and Betty Boop, respectively. Several pieces of concept art can also be found online, 
any draft of the screenplay from April 16, 1993 would be posted on Google Drive by Yoshi Killer 2 s but any other storyboard from the cancelled film have not resurfaced. The full screenplay has been found on April 10, 2023, while only a small portion of the storyboard has been found. Cartoon Network All-Star Slam On February 9th, 2003, for only one day, Cartoon Network aired the NBA All-Star Slam Marathon from 12pm to 6pm, which also featured 13 interviews with NBA players telling the viewers about their favorite Cartoon Network characters, and introduced some of the best cartoons featuring those characters that aired throughout the marathon, all leading up to the tip-off of the 2003 NBA All-Star Game on its sister network TNT. These interviews included Shaquille O'Neal and Godzilla, Michael Red and He-Man, Jason Terry and Scooby-Doo, and many more. Four out of the 13 interviews were found by Captain BZ, as well as the Bugs Bunny interview uploaded by C. Martin, who was a voice actor for Cartoon Network at the time. The rest were found by Retro CCN, who uploaded all 13 interviews on March 19th, 2023, making this lost media found. A Self-Induced Hallucination a Self-Induced Hallucination is a 2018 documentary film directed and edited by Jane Shunbrunn. The film is made up of found YouTube videos in which different people talk about the fictional character called Slenderman. The film was released for free on Vimeo on June 19th, 2018 by the account The Eye Slicer and was a Vimeo staff pick. The film was later removed from Vimeo for unknown reasons, making this documentary lost media. Clearly this has been found and we'll get into that in a bit, but I decided to watch part of the documentary and dude, this documentary is so boring. It's literally a collage of Slenderman related YouTube videos, including kids react. On February 1st, 2023, file saving archivists of Moving Image Things uploaded the whole documentary to the internet archive, including its three video resolutions that came from an archive download link of the film, rendering the entire documentary found. But a few days later, on February 7th, 2023, after learning about their documentary resurfacing, Jane, who made the documentary, would state on their Twitter account that the film that the later user archived was not the final cut of the film, so Jane would later upload the finalized cut of the film on Venmeo, available to be watched. Like I said, this documentary is incredibly boring. The Jenny Jones Show Same Sex Crushes The Jenny Jones Show was an American daytime talk show hosted by comedian, actress, and singer Jenny Jones. The show came to attention in 1995 when a taping of an episode called Same Sex Crushes resulted in the murder of Scott Amador, and as a result, this episode was not aired on TV, making it lost media. Same Sex Crushes was taped on March 6, 1995, and was about a man named Scott who had a crush on one of his co-workers, Jonathan Schmitz. Jonathan was unaware that Scott liked him and thought it was Scott's female colleague who had a crush on him. When Jonathan was brought on stage, he appeared unconcerned, and he laughed about that revelation in front of the audience. Okay. Did you think Donna has a crush on you? Did I? No, we're good friends. Well, guess what? It's Scott that has the crush on you. You lied to me. <laughs> interesting. Very interesting. So, uh, he was, he, Scott was pretty open, but he's been fantasizing about you since he saw you under that car for the first time. He had an under the car fantasy and he had a hammock fantasy he's been telling us about. Did you have any idea that he liked you this much? Um, no, 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 I did not. <laughs> Can you tell us not. what your status is? I mean, are you involved with anybody or? Um, no, but I am uh, definitely a heterosexual, I guess you could say. <laughs> but on March 9th, 1995, three days after the taping of the episode, Scott was shot and killed at his home in Lake Orion, Michigan by Jonathan, who had a long history of mental illness and alcohol slash drug abuse. Jonathan was later convicted of second-degree murder and was sentenced to 25 to 50 years at Michigan's Jackson State Prison, now known as Parnell Correctional Institution. Jonathan, who's now 50 years old, was released from his sentence on August 22, 2017. Following the media coverage of the murder and the trial, the producers decided not to air the show. However, part of it aired during Court's TV coverage of the trial 
as part of the presentation of evidence to the jury. Clips from the episode were also featured in the HBO documentary, Talk to Death. The incident was discussed in the first episode of the series trial by media, which also featured clips from the episode. On January 21st, 2023, Reddit user Underclass King made a Lost Media Reddit post stating that they had found the entire episode on Quartz TV's website. The episode begins around the 7 minute 47 second mark and ends about an hour and 9 minutes in, and was said to have been broadcast on Court TV during Jonathan's criminal trial. Analysis from the Wayback Machine indicates the episode was on Court TV's website since at least June 2022. So technically this piece of lost media has been available since June of 2022, but we weren't aware of it and barely discovered this on January 21st of 2023. And that is the end of more lost media found in 2023. Thank you guys for watching this video. It really does mean a lot to me. And by the way, thank you for the insane support on the dolphin muzzle video. I was not expecting it to reach like 300k plus views. That is insane. So thank you so much. And don't forget to check me out on Instagram and Twitter and go buy yourself something nice at EarlDoesn'tExist.com using my link in the description below. But other than that, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time I upload. See you guys.